Hi everybody, it's Lisa Campion here. I just wanted to wish you all a happy new year. This is my last uh, broadcast from my old office. I'm moving my office tomorrow to a new office in Hopkinton, um, which was actually part of my goal for 2018. So I love New Year's. It's, it's a nice clean slate. You get a nice fresh new year to start everything from and you get a, a, a really good chance to set goals. I like setting goals. Um, I think we all like it. And you know, we're used to doing things like vision boards, goal setting, um, manifestation rituals this type of year. And I noticed, I uh, was noticing a lot on, uh, as people were writing about this on Facebook, that um, I see a lot of people really look like they're setting goals from their inner critic, um, which I think is really painful. And I kind of, I think we should try to set goals from our core self, from the soul rather than from the inner critic. And I, I think, you know, sometimes this idea of New Year's resolutions can have this critical, it's a, it's a chance for our inner critic to sort of jump us and have a field day. So what what is the inner critic, really? It's like the internalized critical voices of your parents, of society, of your peers, of like the environment that you grew up in. And those critical voices kind of um, condense into this like, internal dialogue and a lot of times when you pay attention to the inner critic you'll notice it might have the flavor of one of your parents um, more than the other one more than the other or it might be sort of a conglomeration of these different um, voices that we you know messages that we had when we were young and it it's really um, seems like it what it does is rant about what's wrong with you so it has like kind of a rant about all the ways that you're not good enough and you can tell that you're in the voice of your inner critic when you start with, if only you, you know, you really should, if only you, you know, that if only you lost 10 pounds, if only you should could finally get your shit together, you know, th this is sort of the way that um, that our inner critic speaks to us. And um, when, we set, when we set goals from that place, it always sort of comes out of this negative, self-punishing place. And I think that, um, it doesn't, those goals don't really get us very far. And a lot of times when, we're, when we have, when we set goals from the inner critic, it's like we have to use our will. So we use our third chakra to like arm wrestle, like force ourselves to do things coming from this really punishing negative voice. Now, the inner critic is always talking to somebody. And um, that part of us that it's talking to is really the inner child. And I, I see these two like on a teeter totter with each other or in a tennis match with each other and the inner child mean you know you know what your inner child is like that childlike place inside of us um, that really is super emotional and the child in us is very close to our soul has a lot of soul qualities it's like a very powerful archetype and a very powerful part of our inner self and are sort of control drama with each other so Here's an example, and I just want to tell you from this example has absolutely nothing to do with me personally. It's not, which is okay. It is okay. It's it's me. It's me. So, um, so let's just say, for example, your inner child doesn't feel too good. Your inner child is that part of you that feels maybe empty, lonely. Um, you, you're restless on the inside. There's sort of this like needy thing, and so. You go to your fridge and you open the freezer door and you poke your head in there and there's a pint of Ben and Jerry's, right? So your inner child's like, yes, that. And you take that and you go to the couch and you put it on the TV and you watch Friends and for half an hour you feel like you're, you're, you're cozy with your old friends and you're eating this ice cream and in your inner child's like, oh, it's right with the world, right? And then show is over, the ice cream is en empty. And the inner critic will snap in like, what did you just do? What did you just do? And the rant starts. If How can you blah, 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 if only you blah, 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 I can't believe blah, 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 blah. And the inner child's like, I know I was so bad. I just did something terrible. So I'm going to make you go to sign up for the gym or <clears throat> do something sort of punishing, right? <clears throat> That, uh, that drives us from this place of we're not okay, we're not good enough. There's something fundamentally wrong with us. We can't accept this part of ourselves and we have to change. And I thought, um, but, but wouldn't it be fun if this year, 2018, we let our inner child <laughs> pick, 
our goals for 2018 instead of the critic. And I would tell you that this is how you actually get to your soul. So because the child archetype is the one that's really more aligned with our soul, you know, I mean, of course you can't, you know, let our inner child run rampant with your bank card. And I never let my inner child go food shopping because that's, you know, dangerous. My inner child in Whole Foods is like a $500 a grocery bill, right? So we do have to kind of use our, you know, our sense of, of, of common sense here. But what if we really let the childlike part of us pick our goals for 2018? So, um, for example, you might say, like, when we're coming out of love, when we're coming out of the child uh, part, we might decide that we eat food that our body really loves and then we enjoy and feel pleasure in every moment what we're eating, right? What if we decided we wanted to move our body in a way that makes our body really happy? Like, I quit the gym and I just do Pilates, which I love, and ballroom dancing, which I love. So it's fun for me to do that. Um, and the other way um, that you can really access the inner child is through creativity. So our soul comes directly to us through creative pursuits and directly to the inner child. Inner, our inner children love creative things. So maybe, um, you know, we start singing, we, dance, we take painting lessons, we take ballroom dancing lessons like I do. We, um, we dance, we just put music on and dance around the kitchen. What what would it be like to drop that idea that you're going to do this punishing, you're going to go on a punishing diet, and you're going to force yourself to do well, to check all these things off your list and commit to some horrible exercise program that you hate, you know, or we could dance around the kitchen, take paddleboard classes, sign up for belly dancing, go to a museum, learn a foreign language, let the child really out and play in a different way. This is how the soul speaks to us. This is how... Um, we really come into our power in a different way that's more about loving life, loving who we are, accepting who we are, and finding really beautiful expressions of that, life-giving expressions instead of this sort of closing down, rigid, punishing thing that sometimes happens, you know, that happens after New Year's. And I think it happens as we overindulge during the, you know, holidays and we want we want to get back on track and <clears throat> I'm not saying that you should like throw caution to the wind and become like wildly hedonistic but I do feel like when we really align with the soul instead of with the inner critic it changes our pleasure our pleasure our our enjoyment our the juice that we have when you come from the inner critic it's always effort and things will happen until it's like arm wrestling that you can do it, but in, when, the minute you stop going like that, that and it goes away. It stops. Um, it stops working. And when we're really in the alignment of our soul, things flow through us in a more life-giving way. So even when, like, I find that the things that I do are, that are very soulful sometimes are quite difficult. Like, I can't wait to get out of bed and write. Writing is hard. Writing books is hard. It's not like. You know, Bill, I love to work on my business. I think that's really fun. And it's hard. When we're in the soul line, you like spring out of bed and you can't wait to do it, even though it might be difficult. So I just think that for 2018, we should try this. Try this goal setting from the soul and see where that it's going to take you on a path where you really love what you're creating, what you're manifesting. When we let the inner critic choose or we let our brains, you know, the the will and the brain, the mind come together, um, it's usually based on other people's expectations of what we should do. And what'll happen is you'll end up with a little life that looks really good on paper. Well, I got my master's degree and I did this and I have a clean basement and I have tight abs, you can bounce a quarter off, you know, and you can do that, you can. Um, and, and maybe it doesn't give you life so much. It's a life that looks good on paper but doesn't make you happy. If you wanna be happy, you have, Bring the child in, bring the soul in, play, dance, have fun, do create creativity, find pleasure in everything that you do. And then we really um, create a life that flows, that has ease, that has magic. Because when we're in alignment with our soul, that's when we get in a flow state. Some things flow and there's magic. So just thought I would um, see if, invite you to play with us instead of the, the cranky, um, the crankiness of really picking from the critics. So have fun with it, and very, very um, happy New Year. I have a feeling that 2018 is going to be a great year. Okay.
guys.